those of you who don't know, um, Ensnare Percussion is a social platform for drummers of all levels, you know, whether it's, um, you know, you're a beginner, you march drum corps, whether, you know, you're a college band, Ensnare Percussion is for you. We have, you know, lessons, we have licks, it's all about good vibes, it's about having fun, it's about meeting people. Um, so today we're really excited, I mean, this is our uh, first live lesson. Um, yeah, also, uh, feel free to ask any questions that you have, you know, this is going to be pretty chill. It's nothing like strict, I'm not going to be mean or anything, you know, if you have any questions at any time about anything, just feel free to ask. That's what I always tell my students, like, there's no such thing as a dumb question. There's only bad timing, right? But right now, there's no bad timing, because it's, you know, it's going to be chill. All right, so um, let's get started. So what we're going to be talking about today is checkpoints. And if you don't know what checkpoints are, checkpoints are your own personal, like, sense of timing in a piece of music that you're feeling. Um, in rudimental drumming, you know, we think about checkpoints in like exercises or show music, you know, the two main things that we're playing. Um, and using these checkpoints, we can really, you know, that's how we learn to play in time. That's how we learn to play with each other. We all feel these checkpoints. Of course, there's a lot of elements that go into it. You know, there's sound quality, there's, you know, how you look, there's your vibe. Um, but checkpoints is a great place to start. Checkpoints in your feet, checkpoints in the music you're playing. So that way we can all learn how to approach the music together. Um, so let's, before we get into it, this lesson is not necessarily for beginners. Um, if you're like brand new to drums, if you don't know anything about drums, um, obviously don't, you know, don't leave and snare percussion. I want you to be a part of it. But this lesson's for people that have a little bit more of a foundation with, um, you know, with rudimental drumming or, you know, any kind of drumming in general. They've already like moved on a little bit. They have a little bit more of a solid foundation. You know, I'm thinking like advanced middle school players or high school players, um, you know, maybe some college kids. Drum corps kids at the point when you're in drum corps, like, you know, you already understand checkpoints. This is like bread and butter for you. You're like, you got this down. Um, so just letting you know who this is reaching out for. So um, if you feel like this is a little too advanced for you, that's okay. It's good to have the knowledge, but don't freak out. Like, don't panic if this is something that you just, you know, it's a little too difficult. Um, all right, so let's get started. Um, we're gonna start with a basic exercise, all right? We're gonna start with eights, everyone's favorite exercise. Um, and we're gonna talk about checkpoints a little bit with this really basic exercise. Here we go. All right, metronome is at 120. I'm gonna play one rep of eights just to warm up my hands a little bit. You know, gotta get warmed up. Here we go. It's your basic eights exercise, all right? So um, just so you know the format of the exercise, super basic. It's just your basic eight, eight, 16. You have eight on the right hand, you have eight on the left hand, and then you have 16 on the right hand. And then you have eight on the left hand, eight on the right hand, 16 on the left hand. Cool, that's the exercise we're gonna look at first. We have a couple, but we're gonna start with that one. All right, so we're thinking checkpoints, right? Um, obviously, when you put on a metronome and you hear your quarter notes, you're thinking, all right, there's quarter notes. I gotta make these eight notes fit into these quarter notes, yeah? I mean, that's your basic, like everyone kind of knows that if you have a solid foundation of drumming, right? We know that two eighth notes fit into one quarter note, right? And then when we play eighths, we want to link all of those eighth notes together while reaching each of those quarter notes, right? So on and so forth. But what if I told you that there's actually one beat that's a little bit more important than the rest of them? in terms of checkpoints, and that's beat two. Um, beat two, right? And if you're wondering why beat two is so important, just think to like drum set stuff. You know, when you put on a metronome, and someone were, if someone were to play drum set to this, they probably play like, right? You know, and you would hear that snare, you'd hear that backbeat on two, three, four, 
four, right? So that's kind of the idea that we're going to take into our rudimental playing. Okay, so when you're playing eights, don't ever just think that eights is like a super easy exercise, right? We want to actually make sure we're finding checkpoints. One of the biggest mistakes that I see when I'm teaching high school drummers is when they go from the right hand to the left hand, there's something that happens, something bad happens. So whether we slow down, we speed up, we're not playing good eighth notes when we switch from hand to hand. And right, and I'm sure a lot of you drummers out there, if you, you have a tech in front of you, he's probably saying like, you know, watch that transition, like push through the transition, like get going to the next hand, right? So now when you have this check, when you have B2, when we're thinking about that, it's really gonna help us to go from the right hand to the left hand. So we're gonna break it down really simple for you guys. We're gonna start just going to B2 in the right hand, just like this. So do that a few times, get used to how it feels going from beat one to beat two while playing perfect eight notes. Just do it a bunch. Like you need to understand exactly how fast your hand needs to move in order to properly fill out two beats worth of eight notes. One and two, right? One and two. And that's why you always practice with the metronome so you can really hear when you're landing on beat two. Right? So once you have that down, the next thing you have to do is just keep that hand going at that same speed. Right? Eights is a really easy exercise because the hand is always moving at the same speed. Right? We're always moving at eight notes. And four and one and two and three and four and four. So once you have that space down between beat one and that second beat checkpoint, once you have that speed down, then you know without a shadow of a doubt how fast your hand needs to move to finish out the bar, right? Once you have this down, one and two, one and two, and you carry that through the entire bar, that same hand speed, right? It's like this. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Cool, so what I was saying earlier about transitioning from your right hand to your left hand, like that's the tricky spot, right? Because obviously we're going going from one hand to another, you know, for young drummers, even, you know, college or, you know, some high school drummers, they still have trouble, you know, getting from the other hand, you know, while staying in time. So once you have that right hand mastered, you have that speed down, what you want to do is tag on that left hand, stopping at beat two, like this. Two, ready, go. Cool. So if you were if you were listening real close there, you'll notice that it was like just a constant stream of eighth notes, right? And I'm not saying I'm the world's greatest player, but once you know those checkpoints, you know how fast your hands need to move. You know when you start your left hand that you have to get to B2 in time, right? The tendency is to miss B2, right? A lot of people will do this. And they'll miss B2. There's a little bit of a... There's a little bit of a flam between my note hitting the drum and the metronome hitting B2. It's like, that was a good one. Here, let me try and do a bad one. All right, there's like a flam. Whether you're early or you're late, the tendency can vary. But the point is, you miss B2 with that left hand. So when you're thinking about the exercise, right, do what we did with the right hand, do it with your left hand. Like, break it down. Then start with the right hand, play through one whole bar, get to B2 until you have that speed established. Right? And then when you have that speed down, when you know how it feels to go from B1 to B2, and then from B4 to B2 in the left hand, then you play the whole thing like this. Sorry, I didn't play the right format, but you get the point. The point being, when you start to add on all the notes that you're playing, you're still thinking one and two. One and two. One and two. One and two. Got it? Does that make sense? Um, so, and remember, this this thing, this thing about checkpoints, like, no matter what tempo you're at, like, if, I, if I'm your tech, 
and I come up to you and I'm like, all right, eights, here we go. Tap it off, eight and we're in. One. Like no matter what, you're already thinking, two, 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 right? Right? So just remember, like no matter what tempo you're at, because tempo doesn't change rhythms. Think about that for a second. Like tempo does not change your rhythm. Like if I put the metronome at 80 beats a minute, eighth notes still have a speed that they move at, right? It's still eighth notes. If I move the metronome to 120 where we started, that's still eighth note speed, right? Of course, your arm or your hand is moving faster or slower depending on where you're at, but the rhythm is still eighth notes, right? That's not changing, cool? We can all agree with that. Um, so when you're practicing, make sure you get your feet going to this exercise because your feet will really help you like identify where those checkpoints are. Unfortunately, the, the situation that we have right now, I can't show you my feet or else I, I do a couple reps where you can just see my feet. Um, we'll work on that for next time. But um, get your feet going while you're playing this exercise because you'll feel beat two on your right foot, right? If we do just a rep while just marking time, left, right, left, right, one and two, one and two. Think about that, one and two. One and two. So what that means is your hand has to hit B2 while the metronome hits B2 and your foot hits B2. And it might seem like a lot, but if you have a solid foundation of drumming and if you're at like a high school level, you'll really like this will be like cake to you once you really start to practice this. So we'll do a couple reps marking time. One, two, thinking about B2. We'll just do one rep. Um, so make sure when you're practicing, you really feel those checkpoints, right? You feel beat two, and you like understand how fast the hand moves between beats. Cool? All right, we're gonna move on to the next exercise. All right, the next one, another basic exercise called double beat. This is, this is one of my favorite exercises. Um, this one is used to really work on, you know, roll speed. Like we start at a slow tempo, you know, You know, we start at a slow tempo, getting used to playing two notes in quick succession, and then we speed it up, and then we end up playing, you know, like actual rolls. Um, a little plug real quick. Um, one of my other lessons that I talk about, I talk about how to play diddles like the professionals, right? You know, diddle quality, that sort of thing. And this exercise is one of like the base, the, the, one of the foundational pieces for that exercise. All right, so we're gonna talk about checkpoints in double beat. Um, you can always think about beat two, right? Because remember, you can always think back to that rock groove, right? One and two and three. right, whatever. You can always think back to that. But in this exercise, there's a really big checkpoint that we all need to reach together while we're playing double beat, all right? And it's beat three. Here we go, check it out. It's beat three. Claire says double beats are her favorite. Yeah, double beats like my favorite exercise too. I love double beat, right? Beat three, right? Three, four, three, four. All right, so now that you know what the checkpoint is, we'll break it down a little bit more so you can get to that point, um, you know, with a solid understanding, all right? So double beat, four beats, right? Four, four, one measure, just like this. Oh crap. Right, one measure, simple. All right, if you play up to beat two, three, four, three, four, two, three, four, three, four. Like I said, beat two is a great checkpoint, but since beat three has no note on it, right, you're playing one E, a two, and a three, and you're resting there. Since you have nothing playing there, it's a really great note, it's a really good place to feel your foot like slam into the ground. So that way you know exactly where that checkpoint is. One E, a two, and a three, four. One E, two, and a 
foot four one two three right so if you really feel that checkpoint as you're going through this exercise it'll really like help you like understand how these 16 note rhythms when they're chopped up in this weird way how they fit around the downbeats um, of course don't forget about beat one obviously downbeat don't forget about that just like this boom downbeat don't ever mess up the downbeat don't forget about beat two right that's our tendency our groove but this exercise is giving us an excellent checkpoint it's giving us an empty space where our foot needs to slam into the ground while we're playing this cool we're gonna play through the whole exercise and I want you to think beat three while we're playing through this exercise so count with me one two three four one two three four one two foot four one two three four cool I'm gonna play through it and I want you to count this time here we go one So were you feeling beat three through that exercise? Like were you actually counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? Make sure you're actually feeling beat three when you start to play through double beat. Once you have that speed down, once you know exactly how it feels to go one, a two, and a three, one, a two, and a three, when you know how that feels, when you have that speed down, just like we talked about with eights where your hand is moving at a similar speed, your hand is literally doing this the whole time, right? Like turn off the metronome, you're just doing one, two, dum dum, dum dum, dum dum, dum, dum dum, dum dum, a and four and one, a two and a e and four e a one and two e and three e a four and right. Your hand is moving the same speed the whole time, and you. It's good to understand like the entire rhythm, like holistically the whole rhythm that you're playing. Like don't ever take that for granted. You want to be able to play like to know the rhythms. I always ask my students like who can count double beat. I'm sure some of you guys have heard that like your text like all right who can count double beat like. Give me the syllables for double beat. And they're like, oh God, one, uh, two, triplet, three, four. What is that? Hey, Alex Miller, what's up, man? Thanks for the share. Um, so yeah, make sure once you have that beat three down. Three, four. When you have that space down, when you know exactly how it feels to move your hands in time around that empty space, then you lock your hand and you just move it at that speed. Right? Thinking about beat three, cool? So when you're doing it with your feet, beat three this time is on the left foot, right? So you really want to feel that left foot slam into the ground, like this, right? And hey, uh, real quick on the uh, so the format of this exercise, I know we didn't talk about it at the beginning. The format is similar to uh, eights, where it's you know one measure on the right hand, one measure on the left hand, two measures on the right hand. So since we're doing a, a little bit of a hiccup rhythm on the second measure, the there's not going to be a space on beat three. Instead, you're going to play a note on beat three, right? And even though it's a little bit different, it's still good to feel that one note on beat three as you're playing, right? And that's just on the second measure of each hand, right? You have three, four. Right? And then you have a note on the on beat three on the right hand. And same when you play the long measure on the left hand. All right, so we're gonna do it with the metronome, moving our feet. Let's have you guys at home, if you have your pad, like play along with me. Let's play some double beat together. This is my favorite exercise. One, two, think it about beat three.
Hey, um, if you're just joining our first ever live lesson, thanks for stopping by. Um, we are currently on our second exercise where we're breaking down checkpoints. Um, just a quick reminder for you guys that just joined, checkpoints are the downbeats that you're feeling, and they're the big beats that you feel in your exercises or your show music, right? If you're in 4-4, four, four, you know, essentially you have four checkpoints, you have four beats that all your music revolves around, you know, whatever rudiment, whatever rhythm, whatever pattern you're playing, they all fit into like four beats, if it's 4-4, four, four, you know, five beats, five, four, whatever, whatever time signature you're, you're playing in, you know, you have those checkpoints that you're fitting around. So what we're talking about is how to isolate like certain checkpoints in an exercise that'll really help like your understanding of rhythms. The first one we talked about, we talked about eights, where you wanna find beat two in your exercise, right? Just a quick recap. Here we go, just a quick recap before we move on. Right, so just when you're playing eights, right? Three, four, one, two, three, four. Right, you wanna find beat two in your exercise while you're playing, right? One and two. One and two. One and two. One and two. Et cetera, et cetera. Right, because the tendency is when we go from the right hand to the left hand, we forget to find B2 in time with the metronome, right? We don't get to B2 in time. We're either too fast or too slow, depending on you know how fast you're playing it or the line that you're in. Um, so make sure that you're thinking about B2 when you play eights. In an exercise like double beat, the exercise we were on, we're really feeling, um, we are really feeling B3. Three and four and one e a two and a three e and four and one a two and a three e and four e a one and a three e a four and one a two and a e and four so on and so forth right B three is our big checkpoint because for the majority of the exercise there's this huge space where nothing happens except a foot hitting the ground right foot foot right so when you put on the metronome find that B three space. When you have that checkpoint down, when you feel that foot in place, you know, if you're a young line, you might start off the exercise like playing your doubles like too tight, right? Like your, your, your 60 notes will be too close together. And you, but if you feel that B3 checkpoint, you'll know, hey, we were early to B3. Like our space was like ahead of the metronome on B3. So you know, all right, so if our space was ahead, if we hit B3 before the metronome, we need to open up our 60 notes a little bit more. And so then the next rep, you change. You're like, okay, we need to open them up a little more. Right, so instead of like playing, you know, like like really choked off 16th notes, you know, choked off rhythm wise, you're playing really nice open rhythms and you're finding the same checkpoint together in the exercise that you guys are playing. Cool, um, yeah, so that's what we have for double beat. Does anyone have any questions so far? I don't even know how many people are watching. Uh, my girlfriend's banning the camera, she's awesome. Um, but, you know, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask at any point, what's up? Okay, yeah. Hey, um, so we're gonna do one more exercise. And we're gonna make it quick. We don't have too much time left. Um, so we're gonna do a, a quick roll exercise. Let me play for you guys real quick. Cool. So it's your basic short, short, long where you have a short check Two and and then you have a short roll, short roll. Two and three and four and a one and two. Then you have a long roll or a long check. I mean, long check, long roll, and then you repeat. Right. So the checkpoints for this, there's not really like one checkpoint that sticks out. Besides, probably B two because we can still feel that. You have this tempo. We can still feel. Right. We can still really feel that groove happening. Um, so when you're playing this roll exercise, what you really want to do is like take those checkpoints and there's there's those four that we're feeling, right? We're in 4-4 four, four still. Right? So when you're learning that exercise, you still want to feel you want to feel those four beats that are happening and how each there's a certain note that happens on each of those beats, right? Like the first four, the first two beats that we have. Hey, thanks, Allie. Appreciate it. Um, Allie's awesome. Make sure to go follow her. Um, I'll post the link. 
she and I have something cool planned, all right? And I'll post a link to her uh, channel later, but she's awesome. Um, right, anyway, so we have two beats, right? One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. Right? So we know the roll has to start on beat three, right? Because the first two beats, the first two check ones we have, one and two and three, are just check. One and two and three. So if you start the roll early, like which a lot of people will do, they'll rush through those checkpoints. They won't fit those eighth notes to those quarter notes like this, right? Right. They'll and of course I'm really like over dramatizing it, so you get the point. But they will rush through those quarter notes, and all of a sudden the roll is not starting on beat three, and we have a crappy roll. And the techs are like, "What the heck's going on? Like, why is this roll so bad?" Right. So make sure you're waiting to get to beat three. Right. Three, four. And if you think about it with your feet, you have beat one is your left foot, you have beat two is your right foot, and you have beat three, the note we're getting to, as your left foot again. So if you put it all together, you know that you can't start the roll until you get to beat three, which is the left foot, right? Left, right, left. Left, right, left. Left, right, left. Right, so now that we have a really solid understanding of those first two beats, then you add the roll. And a lot of my students will tell you this, my favorite saying of all time is rolls are rhythms. Right? When you start to add a roll on, that's a whole different lesson entirely. Um, hey, if you're just, <laughs> hold up. Um, that's a whole different lesson entirely, like rolls and rhythms. Um, like that's why I was saying earlier, this is a good lesson if you already have a pretty solid understanding of the basics, like your basic rudiments, your rolls, that sort of thing. And if you're just joining us, um, thanks for stopping by. We're actually almost out of time, but we're going to finish talking about the checkpoints in this roll exercise. And of course, this lesson, I'm pretty sure once it's recorded, I'll be able to repost it, you know, so you guys can check out the whole thing in its entirety. Um, so anyways, we'll get back into where we were at, right? So we were talking about the first two checkpoints that you have in a roll exercise. One and two and three, four. One and two and three. You know, having the maturity and the rhythmic understanding to wait to wait to beat three before we start playing the role. Once we get to beat three, hey, we play the role. Cool. And like I was saying, um, roles, like understanding roles themselves is an entirely different lesson, which I have on my YouTube channel, which you guys can find later. I'll post a link to it later. Um, but understanding how a role fills up two beats as well, right? You have your check. One and two and three. One and two and three. Then you have your roll. One, two, three, four. One, two, two. One, two, three, four, one. Cool. The, the cool thing about drumming is everything is like compounded. Everything that you play, like the hard stuff that people play, is all just based on really easy like skeletons and check patterns. And if you think about music that like Cavaliers and Blue Devils play, there is always a basic check pattern under what they're playing that is just like super easy, not, okay, not always easy. Generally, it's pretty simple, and it's really easy to line it up with these checkpoints that we're talking about, right? Dun, 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 dun. So in the case of this exercise, the check would just be eight notes the whole way through, right? Finding each of those checkpoints, right? Knowing that the roll starts on beat three. Roll, one, roll, one, roll. And you add the roll, knowing where it starts. Cool. So once you have that understanding of where every aspect of this exercise starts, like you know the check starts on beat one, you know the roll starts on beat three. Then when you put it all together, you know you have you have to have the maturity and the patience to actually get to that beat before you start playing. That's kind of confusing, I know, but a lot of high school drummers, a lot of young drummers, they'll play, they'll see a roll happen, like one of those girls I'm teaching at, they have some triple rolls in there and it's awesome. And a lot of them like hit the roll before, like if the roll's on beat one, they just hit it before beat one. Like you have to wait, right? You have to wait. One, two, three, four, beat one, right? If your roll starts on beat one, you can't hit it before beat one, right? So that's kind of the importance of checkpoints, like really understanding where these rhythms start. Right, like look at your show. Next time you, you know, when you're practicing, like open up your show music, find like a hard section in your show music. Write down, like mark 
where those checkpoints are at. Like if you have like some paradiddle thing, paradiddles just take up one beat, right? So you understand that that paradiddle has to be wide enough to fit between two feet, right? Like this, that's one beat. Cool, just like our exercise, our check has to be wide enough to fit between one and two and three. And then when you add the roll, you still have to be mature enough to open up that roll enough to fit between two more beats, right? Because there's four beats in a measure. Cool, if there's any techs out there watching this, I'm sure you've heard your drumline or your students, they'll go into a roll and they'll play it just like. You know, something like that. And that's not bashing anybody, it's just, you know, it's just an element of honesty that's really in crucial. It's really crucial to growing as a percussionist, like understanding, like, hey, I'm not finding my checkpoints, right? Okay, that's all we have time for. Um, just a quick rehash before we end this lesson. We talked about eights, right? We were at 120 beats a minute. We talked about beat two, most important beat in eights, right? Once you hit beat two, you know exactly how fast your hand needs to move, right? Because eights, you're playing every single note. So when you hit beat two, you know, hey, I got to keep my hand moving that same speed regardless of what hand is playing, right? If it's whatever the sticking is, it could be right, left, right, 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 left. It could be something ridiculous, but you always know beat two is establishes the speed that I play. That's your crucial checkpoint, right? And in actual eights, a lot of people struggle when they go from the right hand to the left hand, yeah? And then in double beat, our roll building exercise, the big checkpoint we have is beat three where we have a huge empty space, right? Space. Space, cool? That's our big That's our big beat that we're feeling, right? We're feeling it in our feet. We have left, right, left note. Left foot is slamming the ground on that space that we have because that's like the biggest checkpoint that, in that exercise. The last thing we talked about was the roll exercise where we have, you know, there's not really one beat that sticks out more like, you know, like there's not like a beat two or beat three secret. It's just making sure your feet are playing, are moving in time with the metronome and your hands are starting in the correct spot, right? The check starts on beat one, the roll starts on beat three, and then it repeats. And then the check plays beat one all the way to beat four, and then the roll starts the next measure on beat one, right? So making sure you understand that the roll starts on beat one, or the check starts on beat one, or the roll on beat three. Um, and I'll have music for you guys for this exercise if you wanna have sheet music for the roll exercise. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much all we have time for today. I really hope you enjoyed the lesson. I had a blast teaching guys. I love teaching drums. Um, if you're in the KC metro area, you know, come on down to Music and Arts. Um, the video started with a tour of the awesome facility that we're in. It's a great place to be. It's a great place to teach. I'm, I'm so glad to be on board with the team here. Um, but like I said, if you're in the area, you know, come down here, ask for Tim O'Connor, that's me, and I'll teach you lessons. I'll teach you how to play drums. I'll teach you how to get better. Um, yeah, the very last thing I want to say is thanks to all the awesome people in our little community right now. We recently crossed over um, 1,100 you know, followers on Instagram, which is like, holy crap, that's a crap ton of people. 1,100 people follow me on Instagram. And um, yeah, I just want to thank you all for the support. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. Everything is Ensnare Percussion. Follow us on Facebook, like our page. Go to our YouTube channel, subscribe. We upload videos. You know, we try to get them up weekly, but uh, you know, it gets pretty tough sometimes. So we try to we try to get our lessons up as often as we can. Um, other than that, thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.